Hey, hi guys. Welcome back to Thai TV. I'm Niklas Bauer and uh, today we're going to tie the uh, Kicker 2.0. This is uh, my all-time favorite pattern if you want to create a fly that moves like a jerkbait. So we have a lot of side-to-side -side movement. So this is a pattern that pushes a lot of water so the can fish can really pick it up with their lateral line. And if that's not really working, we also have a rattle inside so we can really trigger all their senses. So it's a great pattern. Uh, you can tie it in whatever color you want. We're gonna tie them in a, like a light bream color, which is a really good color, but also like a hot pike, super good combination. And I also really like to fish these in, in really bright UV colors that are extremely fluorescent and extremely visible because sometimes they can make a key. Uh, like this summer we were fishing up in Kaitum, up in Chonayok, and these bright colors in crystal clear water was really getting that fish to activate. So sometimes don't forget these bright colors because they can sometimes do wonders. But now we're gonna keep it a little bit discreet. So we're gonna do a, a bream color with a tan belly but it still has a lot of influence of uh, fluorescent material. So we're gonna run a new color of predator dubbing uh, called an RS Ginger, which has some orange inside of it. And we're also gonna have a, a top of the head with a color called JK Crawl, and which has also a lot of orange inside of it. So we have a really fluorescent pattern, but still in very natural colors. And just to give you an idea how this fly is going to look um, before we start to tie it, I just made a very simple version of how it's actually look when it's um, naked. And uh, the only thing it's missing inside here is a rattle, but otherwise we have the uh, wave tail, which is attached to a fast attach in the back here. So you can change different colors. Um, then it's attached to a shank, which we're gonna tie the back half of the fly. Then another shank that's tied to the hook. Then we're actually gonna have um, rattle inside here so we can create even more noise and then we have the magic head from Marc Petitjean um, which is a really really good product it's usually we run it that way because it actually makes the fly move like a uh, like a lure but this is actually creating a lot of volume and also creating that fly to move side to side in a really good way this flat tail is also helping that a lot so this combined water pressure pushing the water over here, and that flat tail makes this fly go side to side, belly up, and it actually can almost create it to turn almost back way. So it's a really good pattern. And if you fish this roly-poly, it has a movement like a snake in the water. So you can fish it in various ways. I don't fish these pattern with a dragon tail because it usually has the tendency that the fish always just go for the tail. And it's not hitting the hook at all. So we're gonna run this on a 6-0 hook. Um, a little bit heavier hook, so it's going to be a Partridge Universal Predator X. So it's a size 6.0. Uh, I like to have a little bit more weight to it. And I also like a little bit longer hook because otherwise we're going to run out of space because we want this magic head. We want that rattle inside, so it's, we need a little bit more space. And also it's good to have that little bit more keel function to it all. So, but we're going to start out with the first the shank. We're going to run a 25 millimeter shank. 20 or 25 works well. We're gonna use a fast attach, size zero, in the end here as the snap so we can change the tail. Like a cooking program, I kind of pre-did a wave tail. If you want to know how to attach the snap or the, the whatever connection you want to the tail, there are numerous of videos how to do that. But if you can't find one, Pontus will put the link up here or here or somewhere so you can find it easy. So I like to put that into the snap first because then I can see how long the material I want to have here so I get the right taper and the right shape. So I like to have it on there. So we put this in the vise. Have to open the vise so I can get it in there. There we go. So we have the tail here. I just like to put a hair clamp onto it so it's out of the way. Uh, this is a little bit thinner shank. I don't want to have the heavy one in the back because then it prevents the uh, tail from kicking really good. So keep it a little bit light and material wise. Super glue, Techstream 100 denier as usually. Good thread for all type of pike tying in my opinion. So 
as you can see, the thread almost broke here because sometimes these shanks are a little bit sharp where they're cut off. So be a little bit gentle where you go over that transom into a, a single strand wire. So we got that. It's straight and nice. Just gonna put a drop of super glue here. And this is the Wave Tails in size XXL Slim. So there's a little bit longer, a little bit slimmer profile. And I think these are really good. All various colors you can get them in. So we're gonna run, uh, as body material, we're going to run Hairline's Polar Reflector Flash. This is a nice body material, builds a lot of volume, but not creating too much weight. This is a color uh, tan, actually. It's quite brown, but it's actually called tan. So we're gonna attach that to the fly, having the tips pointing down. As you can see, when you, when you kind of tie this in, you see that they're pointing some, some direction here. You want them to be facing the floor. So we're gonna wrap this until we go into single strand of the uh, shank. So wrapping it forward. Folding the material back the whole time, like that. And then we go into single strand, and then we're gonna tie it off. There we go. So just fold that material back a little bit. I like to start the fly here. In the past, I didn't do this, I started with the craft tool right away, but it actually it becomes quite tight in the underside of the, of the fly here to get the material right. So I, I started now the last half year to tie it like this because it just becomes so much easier to tie. Then we're going to run um, Croft Fur as the main material and that's going to be a standard brown and it's going to be a tan. And, and when you buy Croft Fur, get the good stuff. Don't buy the chi China crap because the fibers are really short and it's not really the same structure to it. So this is Hairline's uh, Extra Select Craft Fur. And it's really, really good stuff. So we're gonna, um, when you buy these, they come in a, you know, a full carpet like that. And I just like to run them in, uh, cut them into uh, like thin straps like this. And uh, they're around one and a half, two centimeters wide because it's usually very simple. Then you can just put your scissor in there and you get that perfect bunch the whole time when you, you don't have to try to get it from a big carpet like that. So put them in straps like this and it's gonna be very simple to work with. So we're gonna start with the tan here. Got some left. Um, I prefer using a, um, a little bit longer scissor when I'm doing this. Um, usually I put this on my leg uh, when I do this because it's a little bit more simple, but I'll show you. I'll push the scissor through here and, and then you just lift up the material, put the scissor onto the table and you can cut it off. And you have a nice clean uh, rag there and you don't waste a lot of material. So we're not going to use a lot of this under fur here, it's just building too much volume, which we don't want to have in the back of the fly. So we're just going to take a, like it's a dog brush or a comb or something to get that material away from the fibers. And we also don't want to have this too long because if we tie this in, it's going to see it's almost the same length as the tail. So we want to take some of the longer fibers out. Of course, you want to, if you want to save these further, you can do that, but you don't have to. And then we're going to shorten this a little bit. And you don't want the tail to be too bulky. You want it to be quite skinny in the back and then you just want to increase the volume of material all the way forward. So I want these fibers to hit basically uh, where, the, where the tail is as, fast as, as fat as possible. So I don't want this to be too long. So I kind of like measure it up so it becomes good. I cut that off so it's, the length is good. And I put that on the table. So we have the tan for the belly. So we're gonna run a uh, nice brown or a medium brown on top here. So we'll do the same. Put that scissor into the material. Put it on the table. When you cut it off, then you get a lot of material right out. Take the brush. Can I get most of that fur, under fur, out? 
and then you get the last with your fingers out. Taper it, get some of those long ones out from it. And I like to make it a little bit thicker on the back and a little bit thinner in the belly so you get that right profile, so you get that, that type of profile on the fly. So we're gonna make sure that these are the same length here. I'm just gonna make sure that they are correct. And so now they have the same length. I like to make them uh, correct here because when you start folding this and tying it on the belly, it's really hard to see that you get the right length to it. So we start with the belly here, the tan one. We tie this straight back. So you try to grab it with your left hand. One loose turn and then you kind of continue going a little bit thicker, harder wraps. I like to do with the tan first because then I can get the darker color to kind of go on top of that. So then we're going to run a little bit darker here. Now I know if I have these the same length here, I'm going to have a nice taper to the fly. So we're just going to do the same here. One gentle turn and then start pushing a little bit pressure to the thread. Make sure that these fibers are going nicely together here. Then continue going a little bit forward with the thread. And if you have a lot of material here, or regardless if you have a lot or less, try to taper these so you don't cut it off doing this because then you're going to get a very sharp edge to it. So put your scissor flat and try to lay it along here. So when you come to, when you go with the thread forward here, you're going to have a much, much more taper uh, front or, or body of the fly uh, where you're going to wrap the body material. And it's just going to look a little bit nicer. So put the scissor flat and try to taper the cutting here and it's going to be easier for you instead of going like this and cut it off. So now when you go with the thread forward here, it's, you're going to make a nice slope and the thread wraps is not going to fall down. So we have that little bit darker belly, uh, darker back and lighter belly, uh, which looks good. So I like to just get that material, all material back here so it doesn't tangle. And then we're going to do two different colors of ripple eyes. It's a really good type of flashable, which is perfect for this one. I like to have a little bit um, flashy profile to them. You can actually tie them with a lot of ripple eyes and less material if you want to have a really, really flashy pattern. But this is going to be like a semi-flashy. Semi, semi we're going to run sand, very close to a tan color, and then we're going to run copper on the back, so you get that little bit darker, lighter contrast to the fly. So around 10 strands. Try to comb them out a little bit and tie them in around 60-40. So 60% back, 40 in the front. Tie them in, try to spread them a little bit and then fold them back. So we start with the sand on the belly and we kind of go to the copper on the back. Just try to move out around 10 strands like that. Same again here. 60% on the back and roughly 40% forward. Try to spread them out a little bit and fold it over. Give it a little bit push with your thumb like that and it has a tendency to kind of move nicely across the whole color. So so this is the, like the ending. We want to have those fibers kind of hitting, most of the fibers hitting where, they, where the fatter of the tail is, which I'm pretty happy with that. And uh, going like that. I'm gonna run the polar reflector again here. So we're just gonna find the correct end. Go back with the thread again. Attach it, just like normal. All the way back, go so you leave at least two to three millimeters. Put some super glue here so you secure all those previous thread wraps. You don't have to really um, 
wait for this to dry because when you just wrap this in a little bit wet super glue, it just becomes a stronger pattern. So don't worry about that. Just don't get your fingers in that because then it might you might get stuck. So try to fold those fibers back with your left hand when you're wrapping it forward. Oops. One more turn there. So that's done. I'm gonna tie that material off. Put it on the table again. Fold those fibers back. Can make a few wraps forward with the thread. So I'm gonna make sure that this is, looks good. And um, a drop of super glue again. That. So now we're going to do um, continue with this. We're going to run uh, tan on the belly and brown on the back again. But now we're going to kind of hollow tie it. So we're going to tie it forward and fold it backwards. Uh, so we get a little bit more volume to it. So we're going to do the same again. Uh, take that existing material on this one here. So much easier to put this on your leg when you do this. but. Do it for a show here. That was the end of that one. Once again, take your comb or brush, get all that material out. And now it's a little bit important here because you don't want these tips here to be longer than those. So now you want to create the taper here. So but we're going to tie this forward and reverse it. So basically we can count, if you are like a centimeter shorter when holding it like this, it's actually going to be a very good taper. So these tips are like one centimeter longer than these. So if you go like that, it's going to be a very good taper. So we take that, cut that existing material off, put it on the table so we can measure that brown one on too. Take that same amount of material, comb it out, so you get rid of that, take some of those longer tippets or fibers away, we can have this slightly longer, uh, but not, definitely not shorter, but not too long, either, but just a li little bit longer, so we're going to do it like that, and we're going to cut that off. So put that on the table, start with a tan on the belly, fold that over, and we're going to tie it forward. So start with the belly there, one gentle wrap, and then continue wrapping it backward, backwards a little bit. So make sure we have some space for the, uh, for the, for the shank eye, cut all that material away. We don't have to taper it, we just have to cut it out because we're not going to go with any thread behind this point here. So make sure that you have that basically as one bunch on the belly. And then we're going to take this one and do the exact same thing on top here. So tie it in as tight as possible. Put a little bit of pressure to the thread and wrap it backwards. Then try to keep these kind of like two separates, like these guys would do with their mustache. So we kind of keep them in two different colors because we don't want them to mix too much. So we cut that nice and tight. What I like to do now is to do a little bit super glue on the thread here just to get because we have quite a few thread wraps behind here. So I just would like to go a few wraps here so we get some super glue into that thread so we don't have uh, uh, these two wings break when you catch a lot of fish on them. And then we go, I don't want to have too flashy on the second one. So we're gonna actually incorporate this flash here. I want it, but I don't want it to be too visible. I want this hair to cover it. So we do it on 10 strand, strands of ripple eyes again. 
but we're going to tie them underneath here. So we go like that, try to spread them evenly around. The same kind of profile again, so we do 60 and 40 in the back. So copper on the back, and then we're going to run some sand on the belly here. So it's going to turn it around and do exactly the same thing here again, like that. Nice and evenly spread. So now it's a little bit tricky, it's not that hard, but so we want to do, we want to fold this back here, gr grip it with a clamp again, and then take the thread and make a few turns. So we kind of lock that in place. We turn this around, we fold this, grab all the material, and then we make a few turns here. So we kind of secure this, and then you want to grab this with the hair clamp again, so we get that material nice and secure, so a nice and even spread. And then, because I don't want to have too many thread wraps in front of this, so some super glue on the thread, this is called cheating. And then you kind of press this against the hair here, make a few turns, and then we're just going to do can do it with finish or we can do it just one notch here, but it's up to you guys. Make sure that's secure and then we're going to cut this off. So what this super glue does now is that it's actually going to prevent it. We're going to get that right angle to it right away and also it's going to keep the profile looking good. So, so this is the back of the fly and actually it's quite a small nice good looking streamer right away here you know so we have that I actually need to brush it a little bit so it, everything comes together and now you can see it's a kind of a nice streamer for the back part of this so we have the tail uh, and we have a nice profile, a nice taper to it. So this is the back half, and now we're going to put that onto the other shank that we're going to attach to the hook. Um, but before that, we're just going to take a brown marker here, and we're going to color that white thread a little bit, so it becomes dark. I don't think the pike will see that, but I'm a little bit picky when it comes to that. Now we're going to run an intruder shank from Flyman. This is a 35 millimeter one. It has a slightly bigger loop here, so it makes that tail kick even better. So we're just going to add that to it. Put it in here. It's a little bit thicker wire, so we need to open the vise a little bit. And this one you want to be able to close as much as possible. So you want it to be as far out in the vise as possible, like that. So, something like that. So now we have this, and now I can work with the thread all the way up to make this oval uh, loop here a little bit more round, so it doesn't tangle too much, or actually it doesn't tangle at all. So a little bit super glue, and then we start to close in this gap here. Make sure it's straight. Come here. We're gonna cut that double thread off. And then we're going to start to make this looking like oval. Instead of oval, a little bit more round so it doesn't chink. So I'm a little bit happy with that. Just put one more drop of super glue here so the thread doesn't fall down. And then kind of work, uh, work ourselves down. After that, we want to, now we're in the stage here, so we have done the, uh, uh, the tail, so, which is done. So now we want to start wrapping this with bottom material before we attach this to the hook. So we're basically going to wrap a little bit of that, put it to the hook, and then continue wrapping with some bottom material. Just make that transit a little bit easier and, uh, and better looking. So. We attach this to the hook here, all the way up. We go with the thread all the way to it becomes single material. And we're just going to wrap this 
all the way till we go into single strand of the wire. So fold that material back the whole time. Like that. And there we are on single strand. So we're gonna tie that off. Cut the material off. And we can make an out here if you want to. We're gonna attach this, but it's good to have a little bit knot there so, um, so it doesn't tangle when we're going to take it away from the vise. So now we have uh, the tail is done. This is kind of the transit for the next one. So now we're gonna take this away from the hook or from the vise and attach it to the hook. So this is the back part of it. Doesn't look all that fancy, but we're getting there. So a little bit heavier wire, um, 6 -0. Start by putting some super glue on the hook, the back of it, so we get a good, uh, good thread base. I actually need to change the thread here. Run out of thread. So. New spool. So now we got the thread there. Uh, we don't have to start with the thread up here we're just, we're because we're going to run out of space or we don't want to have any thread wraps where we don't need it because we're going to have a rattle there, we're going to have a magic head, so we want to keep this as naked as possible. So we're going to attach this. Uh, you basically want to attach this so where the double material here you want that to be leaning against the hook bend where it starts to make a hook bend like that or starts to make a the turn if you, if you say it like that. So we're gonna kind of keep it level there and we're gonna start wrapping it forward, tightening up the thread a little bit and then we continue wrapping it backwards. Um, this becomes actually very strong so if you would like to have a hook in the back here it, this will hold in any case but now we're, gonna, we're not going to have any fish holding onto this, or hopefully not at least. Uh, so we don't have to be super thorough here, but this is actually a very good way to connect two hooks in any, in any case because it becomes very, very strong. And when you have made three or four turns going back and forward of this, crossing it back and forward a little bit, it's just super strong. So, so it's a very good and very simple way to connect um, the back part of your fly to the front fly. But if you're going to have a hook here, make sure you do this thoroughly so you don't lose your fish. So we've got the back part, we got that connection there. So we're just going to start by wrapping a few turns here. So we get a nice transit into the hook here. Uh, as normal, super glue. We can coat this whole connection here. And we're just going to kind of add a few turns here. So, it looks nice. So we're going to wrap one. Uh, third one. Fourth one. Oops. I lost one there. I'm going to go back, do one more. And one more. Then I'm happy with that. So we tie that off, fold those fibers, Oop. tighten it a little bit, so fold those fibers. And now it's nice and, and tight there, we don't see that we're going from the shank into the hook, so it looks really nice and neat. So we're going to run some um, more craft for here now, and this is going to be like the second color here. Uh, behind this, so we're going to do the opposite, the same way we, we ended this one. So we're going to tie it forward and reverse it. And after that we're going to tie a magic head and the rattle in here. And then the rest of the hook is going to be naked until we get to the, to the head here, 
where we're going to make a lot of bulkiness to try to get it as, to push as much water as possible. So, a little bit more material now because we're getting further and further up. So, a little bit more material, creating that little bit bulkier feeling to it. Still taking all this under fur away here because it's just going to make so bulky feeling to it when you start wrapping your thread around that. Making it nice and neat. And once again here, it's important that these tips here are not longer than the previous one here, because it's, you're going to get the whole wrong taper of the fly. So what we're going to do is take some of the longer ones there. So this bunch I tied in here, that's the length here, so I cannot do longer than this. But I'm going to tie this forward and reverse it, so if I cut it off here, I'm going to be good to go. And it's almost always easier to kind of figure the taper out on top than trying to do it on the belly. So make that there. And then we go for the tan one. Same here. Lift. Just try to get that scissor straight in so you get a nice and clean cut. So much easier to do this on your leg, so I can recommend you to put it on your leg when you do this. And we do the same again here. Get all the fuss away. Take the longer ones out. Measure it in. And now we're going to start with the belly, just like we did the previous one. So we're going to turn the uh, vise around to tie this in, grabbing the material with your left hand. It's a little bit tricky here because you have a hook point that usually wants to be a pain in the ass here. So, so try to get that around nice and evenly spread, 180 degrees from this side to the other side. Cut all the existing material away here as tight as just possible. And then we do the same with the brown on top. You can, uh, can twist this a little bit so you kind of keep them separate. One gentle turn some pressure to it, and then continue wrapping this backwards here. So if everything is correct here, we should have them nice and evenly sped, kind of separate these guys, cut the existing material away, which I believe you know at this time. Once again, a little bit super glue on the thread, just to make sure that we have the durability we want on a pike fly. Make a few turns so it's nice and strong here. And we do the same with the ripple eyes. But now we're starting to increase the amount of ripple eyes because I want a little bit more bulkiness and all a little bit more flashy in the front of it. So uh, I would say it's almost double the amount of flash we had in the previous one. So copper on top. And then we're going to run sand on the belly. And around the same uh, kind of taper to it. So 40% back. And 60% uh, in the front. Just 
Just make it nice and evenly spread. Like that. And when I come here, I usually take a brown marker and just color this thread here brown. It's not going to be visible, but it might. And I hate that white sticking out. So, so do the same thing again here. Try to separate these into two different bunches here. So we get all the brown and all the tan. So we start with folding that over, taking a hair clamp, getting that out of the way, making one, two, three turns, kind of folding that over and doing the same thing on the belly here. It's a little bit trickier when you have a hook here, but it usually works. Going around and grabbing that material again. So down you have everything folded back, trying to get all those fibers nice and away here. Can be a little bit tricky, but it usually works. So now we got a nice uh, even line there. We've got a few fibers here still being a pain in the ass, but I can probably get that out of the way. Just adding some super glue to the thread. And we're gonna push these thread wraps against the material here. So it becomes strong and getting that right angle to it. So when you, li when you lift this up, you have that right angle and right taper to it. So now we got the back half of the fly done. So now we're going to basically incorporate magic head and a rattle. And uh, the rattle is something we call the a Bauer pike rattle. This is a very, very heavy duty rattle, which has a metal bead in the back. It just increases the sound of it a lot. And they're very, very durable, and they don't break like these glass or Durex rattles. So they're very, very strong, and they're very simple to tie in if you want to. You have that little tip here with a, with a yeah, I don't know what you could call it, but it has a gap here, so they're very simple to tie in. Um, what you have to do, what you have to remember when you start doing this here, that we're going to have a magic head. This is the R14, so it's the biggest size Mark is doing. So when you think, when you're coming to this point and we need to tie this in, we need to think that this one needs to have the space and this needs to come over here. So we need to think about, so we're not running out of space here. So what first thing we do is we kind of cut this so it's very, very short, the place where you tie it in. So we're only keeping like one millimeter, that's enough. Put that hair clamp on here so we get everything out of the way. Put a little bit super glue onto the thread wraps here because we're gonna basically glue this rattle onto it. So you push this as close to the material as possible but without pushing it down, you know. So, and then we start making a few really hard wraps, making sure that this is not pushed down. And then you need to make a whip finish here, so because we kind of need to end the threading here. Make sure that this is tight and secure so it doesn't break when you start cutting the thread off. I always put one layer of super glue here. It's a little bit complicated, but it's worth doing. Getting that rattle inside here. And then we can put one drop here because you're going to start putting the thread back in the front of the rattle. So just add the thread here again. And then you start tying this on in the front here, which is very simple. Whoops. Don't 
push it too much because it's actually going to be so strong it's going to bend the hook this way. So just make a few turns here. It's not going to come out. I can, trust, I can tell you that. And then you start wrapping the thread forward and back and forward a few times. So then we just make a whip finish here. So we can uh, attach the magic head. So we need to cut off the thread. So then we take our magic head that we just took most of that off. We're just keeping one millimeter there. So we're putting this, pushing it over the hook eye like that. And we don't want it to be all this way. We want it to be as straight as possible. So, but still leaning on that. So that's basically as far as possible where you can push this back. So push a little bit more back again. Put some super glue here where we're going to attach it. Start with your thread again. Make a few wraps underneath. Go forward with the thread, push it back so where it becomes straight and then you kind of lock it in place here by pushing it, holding it and wrapping this material forward. So now we kind of basically got this covered here. This is going to create a lot of water pressure. So of course you can use different materials here to create this volume. You can use body tubing and stuff like that. But I've tried a lot with different materials and of course Magic Heads is the most expensive way to do it. But in my opinion it's definitely worth it because it just becomes really really good result with them. So give it a try. So I'm going to keep that, lift that material out. So we can see how the fly is turning out. I'm going to make um, one turn with the super glue again here. So we're basically going to keep all of this naked. Now we're going to add uh, more ripple eyes. We're going to add more craft fur. We're going to add a lot more of flashable. And then we're going to create a head of predator dubbing. So here we kept it a little bit sparse. We kept it a little bit less bulky, but now we want to build as much bulkiness as possible just to get it to push a lot of water. And the more water it push here, um, the more water it actually gets to hit this point here and that tail is going to kick uh, even more, you know, and you're going to get as the, the more profile you get here, the bigger volume you get here, the better kick you're going to get here or the more side and side movement you're going to go. So don't, don't be afraid to push a lot of material here. So first we're going to start with some uh, ripple eyes, uh, trying to spread it evenly around. This is basically tied in 60-40 um, again. Try to spread it around. Fold that over. Spread it around. So now we're still tying on top of this silicone tube here. Because you want the transit to be as nice as possible. So we're running sand on the belly here. Same thing again here. Tie it in 60% back and 40 in the front. Just kind of work with that material. Fold it over once again and tie it in. So now we have that evenly spread. We got a nice taper to it. We're starting to build that up. We got the flashy feeling to it but we got it from inside not, not too much from the outside. You know. So going to make a few thread wraps just to secure this. Also make a nice slope here so we have a nice transit over to the next material. So we don't have that point where the material just falls off. Some super glue to secure everything. And then we're going to add some normal flashable here. Or at least not ripple eyes. So we're going to run polar reflector flash. So really nice flashable from uh, Hedron. It's a little bit softer flashable. Um, it actually contains some hair inside, so it mixes a lot with other fibers in a good way. So we're just going to run full length fibers. This is uh, like an antique gold. I think they call it a yellow gold. And then we're going to run a copper just to get a slightly darker profile to the back. Add some tangle here, so we're going to get those 
out. So this is copper. Uh, it has a little bit pearl inside of it, but it's really nice color combination. We're going to fold that, divide it into two, and taper the ends as we normally do when we tie with flashable. Put it on the table. Do exactly the same thing with the gold. Fold it, cut it, and taper the ends. We can start with the gold actually. So we're going to run that on the belly. We're going to spread it evenly around. We're going to tie this in around 50-50. So one thread wrap to secure it. And we're going to work ourselves back a little bit like that. And fold this material. There we go. Make a thread, make a drop of super glue here so we don't lose the thread. We're getting a lot of bulkiness here because we have this silicone un underneath. And now we're going to round the copper. I like to do that slightly longer. So around 70% in the back and 30 in the front here. And uh, I just have to grip the material with the thread here. Try to get it evenly spread around it. Fold that material back. Make sure it's spread evenly. Oops. Getting quite a lot of bulky profile here, but that's. We are getting that with that head, so it's hard to do it in a different way. So now we're getting the flashiness and a little bulkiness up here. We're going to grip that material. And we are going to secure this with a lot of super glue here. So, what we're going to do. Here now is we are going to do, there's going to be two things here in the front uh, to hide this bulky thread here. We're going to do craft fur on top, on the bottom, and then we're going to end it up with a head of um, predator dubbing, which is good because we can kind of hide all this material that we folded back and forward here. So we're going to start with the craft fur. We're going to jump a little bit forward here so we can hide all this. So we're going to do tan just like we've been working with before. And it's a little bit hard to tie this without getting this bulky feeling here because of the magic head and everything like that. So don't be afraid if you get it like this because we can hide everything of this underneath the material. So once again, now we can do almost a full length of this. We're running tan here, so we're going to run that on the belly. And we're going to run brown, just like we have done previous one, we're going to run brown on the back. Nice and chunky bunch here. Take all that short fibers away. Oh, I actually need a little bit more brown, I think. It's enough. Add another piece there. Now we're getting the material I want here. So that's going to be tied in front and on top of all this. We're going to start with the light color on the body, belly. Going to go up with the thread a little bit. And we're going to tie this as tight to this color as possible. And hide that. Then we're going to do the same with the brown here. Push that on top of this. So we get a nice and even spread there. Now we just need to taper this away as possible, as much as possible here. So 
just a good way to hide all those thread wraps. So we're going to push that thread back a little bit. So now we kind of hide, nice hiding of all that. We got a nice color transit here going from light to dark. We got a lot of flashable inside, which is giving that fly kind of a glow from the inside. And now we're just going to end this with a head of predator dubbing. And um, just a little bit annoyed about some of the fibers I have here. So pay a little bit attention to cutting some of those off. So we got that. Make sure that head is uh, nice and even so it's uh, easy to get the predator dubbing on. So we're going to run, uh, this is a really cool stuff to, uh, to work with, with heads. Simple to work with and it becomes really nice heads. We're going to run a ginger and a craw. So we're going to start with the ginger on the belly. You're going to go Quite heavy in material. This has a really cool orange to it. So when it glows, you have some orange kind of lightnings inside of it. So we're going to run this in the belly. You don't want to push this material too much down. You want to keep it light uh, in the feeling to it. So kind of going to go one simple turn to grip the material and then continue with a few wraps where you push a little bit more. So we want to have that like 180 degrees from left to right. And then we're going to go with the darker on top. Do the same thing here. Try to get that other material situated on the belly. And then we're going to run this on top here. So one easy turn, make sure that we don't have too many of these fibers going too far down. Making a few turns, making sure we have a nice line there. And then we're basically going to fold that and fold that at the same time. I comb this together. And then we're just going to add a very light turn of darker around the hole. So we get a little bit darker contrast all around the fly here. So we're just going to add a little bit of the darker color and try to get it spread a little bit more then 180 degrees around it here. So a very light turn, gripping the material, pushing it in all around here. Like this, making a very nice and gentle combing. So we get it spread evenly around. Make the thread come through that material. Few thread wraps. Comb it around so we get a nice color here. Color the thread with a brown marker so we don't have that visible. Some super glue on the thread. And uh, the only thing that's left is some eyes after this. So we color that. And do one whip finish turn. Push that through there. So that's basically done there. 
And we just need to do a lot of combing here so we can get all the materials to come together. So we take a brush and be quite tough on this. So you get all the fibers to mix nice. And um, basically that's where we have it. So it's a very bulky profile in the front, uh, really kicking a lot of water. And then you have this loose tail and you have the rattle inside. So every time it goes side to side, it's going to go and it's really, really effective. So let's put some ice on this one. Let's make it 100% ready. So, boxy. So the equal amount of it. Just heat it up a little bit so it becomes a little bit sim more simple to work with. We'll mix these together. Just add some heat to it again so it becomes a little bit easier to work with. And then you want to attach this to one side here, from the hook eye, a little bit up. Kind of want to push that material or that glue into the material a little bit, so um, the eyes really stick, so they don't fall off. If you hold the material down when you do this, you don't pick up too many loose fibers, so it becomes actually quite easy to do it. You want to run some uh, fluorescent eyes on this, so these are extremely fluorescent. And you take the eye, this is actually a 11 millimeter eye, so you lean it and then you kind of push it into the glue. And you do the same with the other side. Kind of lean it on the hook eye and then you fold it into the wet glue. And then what you want to do is you want to massage this in a little bit here. So you get that glue to get, grab all those fibers. You want to make sure that this is straight. Then you want to take a hair clamp like this. And you want to push that together uh, until this starts to become a little bit slow then you uh, open it again. So we're just going to spend the next five minutes waiting. So this is done. Uh, just before the glue was really uh, hard, I kind of lifted the clamp and I pulled the material a little bit. So I get this nice and bulky profile to the fly. So the only thing I want to do now is I want to add some, uh, some UV glue here to uh, make it a nice and shiny and a little bit harder surface so it gets a little bit slicker and the water pressures over the head a little bit faster than, uh, than it would do if it's not like that. So I want the material to, the water could to flow really fast hitting this magic head here. So we're going to use Gulf Thin Man, a thinner uh, UV resin which is super good. So we're just going to push a little drop of that, I'm going to hold the material down here so I can get that material or that resin down here in between the eyes. This is a thinner resin which actually goes into the material a lot. So I'm going to cure that. And then we're going to do some on the belly too here. And then this, this is just to get some of the resin into the material so it has a nice um, base for the uh, flexmen that I'm going to push on top of it and that gives it a nice uh, slick surface but it's not too, too hard so it doesn't break and you get that little bit tension to the material so it doesn't become stone hard like epoxy or something else would be. 
So we got this as a base, so it's a little bit stiffer here now. And then I'm just going to run some Flexman, so it's a, a resin which has a different uh, texture to it. it. Just gives slightly a better and a softer uh, feeling to it. And now I can actually work with the resin a little bit further up into the material here. So I'm just going to do it like that. And we're going to cure that. It's so cool with these new resins that are on the market now that there's no smell, there's no tackiness at all. They're just 100% good to go right away. It's a big improvement there. So we're going to push that there. And we're just going to cover this a little bit up in the material here. And a few seconds and we are good to go. As you can see you have all these really cool fluorescent fibers in the pressure dubbing here. The head is uh, nice and cured and uh, we have what I really like with this pattern. We have this really bulky profile that thins out in a small and ends with that uh, wave tail. So the water is going to push over here, hit the magic head and come in on the sides and really make that tail kick. And when you're fishing this quite aggressive, it's going to go really nice side to side. And if you fish it roly poly, it's going to swim like a, like a bait fish or a snake more probably. Um, it's a simple pattern to tie. It's a little bit time consuming, but it's a really good pattern. Uh, it has the same size of your palm of your hand, which is a really good go-to uh, size uh, to start out with. So good pattern. Uh, tie it with some fluorescent uh, uh, material and you're going to have a really good fish catching pattern. So that's done. And as normal with the Thai TV show, we're going to give this fly away. So leave a comment why you want this fly. And uh, within a week, we're going to give it out to one of you lucky guys. I uh, hope you're going to catch something big on it. Great pattern. And uh, just as normal, please follow us on social media, Fly Dressing or Nichols Bauer. And um, have a great one. And tie some flies. <laughs>